was destroyed completely in the recent past by a new management uh, and a new management style. It is now the CNN of our time. They will not ask the real questions, which is why is there a war on the police? Did Obama's rhetoric have anything to do with it? Why is ISIS still functioning? Why, have, uh, why is the U.S. military never, ever, ever uh, been given the targets of the training camps to, to attack? Uh, the U.S. Air Force could eliminate these training camps in a very, very short period of time, killing everybody in them or destroying them so they're useless. We even know where the camps are. I saw a map of them the other day. And yet your president, the commander-in-chief, will not offer a strike against them. I see it as clear as a bell. There is no doubt in my mind that this is a, an orchestrated war against the police that was triggered by the man in the White House. And I'm not asking anyone to agree or disagree. That is my opinion. It's that simple. I don't need any confirmation for what I see to be real. How do you like that? I'm not going to pretend that I really don't know what's going on. And I need your opinion. I don't really need your opinion. I understand exactly what happened. I know that this maniac wants this to happen. Oh, I don't mean actually kill police. I know he gave some heartfelt uh, statement last night about, let's see, which cop killing was that one? Hmm. Oh, the one in, in Texas, that's right. When that white cop was shot in the back of the head by a black man. Yeah, I think even Obama had to come up from the ice cream and give a speech on that one. Well, now he's up in Alaska renaming mountains for um, political purposes. You understand what he's doing up there, don't you? He's a community organizer. He's organizing the Inuits who don't vote to make sure that they vote for a Democrat, socialist, Islamist uh, from here on into the future. Do you understand what he's doing? He's agitating in Alaska. And so, again, here we are. Cops are dead, another one dead, all because of the individuals I mentioned. I wake up today saying I'm not going to do it again. And then I wake up to this manhunt underway north of Chicago for three suspects in the murder of a police officer, armed gunman, uh, traffic stop, shot him, stole his gun, stole his gear, and ran into the woods. No pictures yet of, of any of them. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they look like. They're described as two white males and one black male, but further than that, we don't know. Let's hope that there were some body cameras or helmet cameras uh, in that department, which will show it, show who they are. And now there's a manhunt for the killers of another cop. And the reason there's open season on cops is because of the war on police that was started by Barack Obama, Eric Holder, who was then attorney general and now is enjoying a multi-million dollar a year reward for his great work as a lawyer. Al Sharpton, the street thug, uh, turned national political hero by Obama and others who have called for a war on police. So criminals are no longer afraid of police for two reasons. They know that the police are intimidated by the vermin lawyers from NYU and Columbia who will put a policeman in jail for doing his job. You see, the new rule in America is the cop is hesitating, and as you well know, if you hesitate with a bad guy, you're going to lose. It's that simple. Well, that's exactly what Obama and Holder and Sharpton, de Blasio and others have wanted. And now there's a war on police who are reluctant to draw their gun, reluctant to take down a criminal for fear of a lawsuit by the vermin rats in the ACLU, all of whom should be deported and all of their assets seized, in my opinion. But you ought to thank God I'm only a talk show host with very strong and loud opinions. You ought to thank God I have no power in this country because the first thing I would do is decouple the ACLU from the legal system. That is the first thing that needs to be done. Decouple these communist rats from the legal system. Were they ever elected? Did you ever go to a polling place and were you given an option to vote for these communist anti-American vermin, these anti-Christian lawyers, these anti-American lawyers? Have you ever been given that option? And yet they're more powerful than the Supreme Court in determining which way this nation goes. One of the first things I would do is I would immediately indict them for various crimes and let them defend themselves. That's the first thing I would do. But I'm not a presidential candidate. I'm only a talk show host. It's one man's opinion. Never forget that. So Obama's up in Alaska renaming uh, mountains and uh, putting out the fraudulent information about global warming in order to push that lie. I'll give you a little evidence to that effect if you're a, a doubter about what I'm saying to you. He's up there talking about global warming and how... Uh, the world's coming to an end, melting sea ice and this and that. 
And at the same time, story on CNN says Obama wants new Coast Guard icebreakers in the Arctic. So I, I scratched my head and said, wait a minute, if all the ice is melting because of global warming, I, I thought, why does their uh, leader, dear leader, need new icebreakers? Because he's a liar. That's all, a liar and a fraud. It's as simple as that. See, the United States once had seven icebreakers in its fleet. But now because the military has been downsized and deballed, it has only two icebreakers that are functional. Russia has 40 icebreakers, with 11 more planned under construction. And so, Presidente will call on Congress to approve funding for replacing a new heavy icebreaker by 2020. Now, what does he need icebreakers for? They're designed to cut through open water ice and are in high demand as industries push closer to exploration of either of the Earth's poles, according to the Coast Guard. So, in other words, the glaciers are melting. They're going to disappear. The uh, animals are going to all die, but they need icebreakers anyway. Uh, which one is true, Mr. Obama? The answer is, can you ever get the truth out of a skilled liar, a rhetorician like him? But let's go back to the war on police, which he triggered, in order to make certain that police resign, police are intimidated, his, his, uh, his thugs are empowered in the streets, do you understand how dangerous this is for you, the average citizen? I was recently in New York, what, two weeks ago, and on the surface, New York is a beautiful city. But right under the surface, there is a menacing presence that can be felt by anyone who has a nervous system. Right under the surface, there are the guys with the cups, shaking the cups in your face, right outside Central Park, right inside Central Park, up and down 7th Avenue. They're shaking the cups, but I guarantee you they have a box cutter inside their coat. And I guarantee you they'll cut your purse right off your body or cut the wallet right out of your pants if they sense that you're weak and that you have something of value. It's a jungle that is kept in check only by the police, the thin blue line, which de Blasio has attacked repeatedly along with his leftist cohorts. And you know, there are consequences to rhetoric. The consequences now are dead police. But now we go back to the war on police. And the reason Obama wants a war on police is so evident to anyone with a, a, the ability to reason that I'll lay it out for you if you can't think. And it's as simple as this. He wants to show how bad the police are uh, against minorities. You see, most of the police in America are white. And that's a crime to Barack Obama. You understand that. He has a racial lens on his uh, iris. And he can only see things through a racial lens. It's worked for him. If you read his own autobiography, he said he really not didn't have a racial consciousness when he was a young biracial man in Hawaii. He never thought about it. And then something happened after being a pot-smoking uh, wayward youth in Pepperdine University, I believe, when he was an ordinary American kid, not political, he said in his own autobiography. He went to Columbia University, a once great university, which has become a cesspool of anti-Americanism. And at Columbia University, he joined in with the communists, the white commies and the black radicals, and he grew his hair out. He said his own words now, I'm not making anything up. And he said he noticed something happened. People were suddenly paying attention to him in a different way. And look where it got him. Just look how far it got him. It worked for him. Now, if you were him, would you stop the rhetoric of your youth if it's made you the president of the United States? What would have you stop it? It doesn't matter how many countries die or how many people die. All that matters is that you're having a grand old narcissistic time. And on that note, I'll take a break. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Do you Let me go from the war on police being conducted by the federal government and their liberal cohorts. Another cop was shot dead. Manhunt, of course, on the way. I want to read you some of the stories and headlines on MichaelSavage.com. Donald Trump on Savage Show tomorrow, Wednesday, which is a picture of myself and Mr. Trump. And, of course, my dog, Teddy. I, I say, of course, because he's always with me wherever he can be. And uh, it's a great picture. 
Next one says 59% back Trump on deportation of illegals. Really, that's shocking. Now, here's an interesting story I stumbled upon this morning. Virginia environmentalist follows in Soros and buys into beleaguered fossil fuel. Another phony. Another billionaire environmentalist who made a fortune in, other, in another field is now buying bankrupt St. Louis-based Patriot Coal for $400 million following a major investment in coal by the billionaire liberal activist George Soros. So they ran the price of coal down by running coal out of America, and then they ran in and scooped up the coal companies. Here is a tragically horrendous story. Murder of elderly couple in Sicily fuels Italy's growing anti-immigrant sentiment from the London Telegraph. And take a guess who slit the throats of this elderly couple in Sicily. They were pensioners. They had worked all their lives in Germany in a Mercedes plant. They went home to live out the few years they had left in Sicily. An 18-year-old African migrant from the Ivory Coast, who was in Italy only a short period of time, allegedly slit the throat of Vincenzo Solano, 68, and then attacked his wife, Mercedes Ibanez, 70. Ms. Zabanez fell to her death from a second-floor balcony as she ran away from the robbers. The murderer, or the alleged murderer, the African asylum seeker from the Ivory Coast, Mr. Kamara, is one of thousands of illegal aliens and refugees living at nearby Mineo in southeastern Sicily. They're arriving by boat from Libya. And I'll just rest my case right there. I ran into a young Sicilian young man a few months ago working in a restaurant that my friend owns in San Francisco. And I asked him, why did you leave Sicily? Your family is there, don't you miss? He said, I miss my family and friends very much. He said, but there's no work for me in Sicily. They're giving whatever little work there is to illegal aliens from Africa. I said, who's giving them the jobs? He said, the liberals in, in Sicily. I said, liberals in Sicily? He said, yes, the liberals in Sicily have taken over the government. So what's left? More than 100,000 refugees have arrived by boat in Italy this year. Can you, anyone listening to this show tell me that Europe will survive another 20 years? Can anyone listening to the show tell me that Europe will be a civilized place in 20 years? Can anyone listening to the show tell me there will be new art of the magnitude that Europe is world famous for? Or will Europe descend into chaos and become another third world hellhole? All a result of the liberalism that has plagued and infected the entire Western world. Gianluca Bonanno with the Northern League, a staunchly anti-immigrant party of the right, says Italians fear for their lives inside their own homes. And he said, this is Renzi's national security strategy. What kind of country are we living in? We can ask the same question about Obama. What kind of country are we living in when we have no national security strategy? When he is flooding America with illegal aliens and refusing to take the war to the enemy called ISIS. A relative told La Stampa newspaper the murdered couple had returned from living in Germany to enjoy their retirement in Sicily. They shouldn't have died like this, slaughtered like goats. And there, my friends, is the face of Europe under the EU thugs operating in a bubble. Also on michaelsavage.com on the top left is a picture of myself with a new hat, new suit, new shirt, new smile with my new book, Government Zero, which will not be out until October. I wish we could move it up because it's my most important and my last nonfiction book. It follows Stop the Coming Civil War. The subtitle says it all, no borders, no language, no culture. But if it was just a repeat of what I had written before, I wouldn't have written it. And I don't want to go into it now because it's too soon, but I would recommend this. If you're a collector of Michael Savage's books and you want to get this last nonfiction book and you want a first printing of it, buy it now on Amazon or one of the other sites where it can be available. Savage.